Oh, hey, it's the video you're gonna show your insurance agent after your roof collapses and you'll tell him, Hey, some guy on YouTube told me how to do this and I followed his instructions and now my roof collapsed. Where's my money? To which he says, You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. So yes, fair warning, do your own research and make sure that everything you're doing is architecturally sound. With that being said, here's how you frame a door. Using 2x4s, you've got the king stud, the jack stud, and the header. With the header, you'll have two 2x4s side by side with the wide end in a vertical orientation, and above that still you have the cripple studs. And all of that is sitting atop the wall sole plate. Thank you all for coming to my Microsoft Paint TED Talk, and let's install a sliding glass door. Grab your best friend the measuring tape and let's get to work. Whether you're going to be knocking out a wall, installing it into a window like I'm doing, or upgrading an existing sliding glass door, knocking out a load-bearing wall is probably the toughest one because you're going to have to support your ceiling and keep it from collapsing using jack posts. Either way, prepare all your supplies beforehand, have a solid plan, and try to do this in one day, otherwise you have a hole in the wall. For that unfortunate circumstance, maybe it's to your advantage to get some tarp ahead of time if something goes wrong. In my case, I have the fortune of having a double wide window which is very similarly framed to a door frame. The night before, I removed all the trim and paneling to make my job the next day easier and shorter. I got that job done in this extra radical montage style. Here I'm just removing the curtain rod and then using a spackle knife and a small crowbar I'm removing all the trim and framing around the window. I made an attempt to save as much of it as I can without breaking with the assumption that I might need to reuse it later. Then I removed the wood paneling, the thermal barrier, moisture barrier and all the fiberglass stuffed between the cripple studs there. The spackle knife I used to get started uh, in between the trim and the crowbar does That's the rest. About a wrap in terms of indoor demo. Removed all this wood paneling, the fiberglass insulation, and interestingly, it says new on it, meaning when this house was built, fiberglass was new, which means I'm lucky. You're gonna need all this stuff to install the sliding glass door frame, including shims and two and a half inch framing screws. Summer zero, monster zero, to turn into a 30 year old boomer. Remove your windows. If they're in good shape, they're a great candidate for selling, used, or donation. Removing the window frame, there's just probably some hidden screws that are screwed into the jack stud. There may or may not be some caulking and foam you'll have to contend with. Just cut that with a box car knife and the frame gets removed. For stuff like this, a sawzall comes in really handy. And next up is Sawzall Fun Time. Do your best to make your cuts as straight as possible. But if you do wind up having any imperfections, you can always rectify those with an angle grinder and a sanding disc. And congratulations, you have installed a hole into your wall. Like, subscribe, and put a hole into that bell button. And here's the resulting said hole in the wall. You're gonna be using a combination of your saws and angle grinder to make this more or less perfect, and then clean it up using a shop vac. You don't want any dust or debris trapped between the frame and all this wood here. Then I installed this aluminum tape as a vapor barrier and a moisture barrier. From here, we built up the frame using 2x4s to conform to the size of the frame, the sliding glass door frame. Then it's time for the frame, but just before you do that, apply some caulk to really seal out that water along the edge of your hole, basically. 
attach the frame to the frame out you made with the studs and we filled remaining gaps with more studs and any smaller gaps get covered in caulk make sure to stuff fiberglass using a spackle knife into any of the gaps for insulation and for the larger gaps just use expanding foam now the following footage was a lesson for me there is a time and a place for being miserly and saving money but Buying a used sliding glass door isn't one of them. Here I am actually removing the sliding glass door we wound up installing, which we bought for $50, and framing it out for a brand new one that we plan on replacing it with. You see, you can't really tell what condition a used door is in until you install it, and then you find out it barely slides, the bearings are shot, and its frame is basically mostly rotted out. And so any money I wound up saving was completely cancelled out by the threefold amount of time we had to spend rectifying the issue. Either way, here we are framing it out for the new door, which is smaller in dimension. Adding 2x4s until it's roughly the same size as the new frame. So if you ever wanted a review on a Reliabilt sliding glass door, which is a Lowe's brand, well here it is. It's fine. It works fine. It's actually quite functional and in the winter it's very well insulated. See this cross pattern that we're measuring? That's how you measure the squareness of a frame. This is also a good time to check the level of the frame, make sure it's straight up and down. Here I'm walking to Lowe's because they forgot to give me a door handle. It took them two weeks to ship me a new one and I had to live with this wood block as my door lock for two weeks. Thanks Lowe's, this is why I have a video blasting Lowe's for a subpar experience. Regardless, here's how you install the handle. Right, this goes on the outside, key comes out. Slide the spade into that slot, then use some tape to hold it so you can have basically a third hand. Before screwing it all together, make sure the latch mechanism actually works. The parts I'm putting in now are called keepers, and on the other side come the sheet metal screws or the bolts or whatever. The strike plate, where the door bolt catches, is adjustable up and down. Here I'm using two short temporary screws to figure out what the best positioning vertically is in order for the door to actually latch onto this. You will fuss with this for quite some time because you can adjust the strike plate, you can adjust your rollers up and down to lift the door, and you can also adjust the actual latch here with this flat head screw. Screwing it Clockwise or counterclockwise moves it in and out of the door. And thus you will keep paying reverence to the holy trinity here. The father roller on the bottom of the door, the door latch son, and finally the holy strike plate spirit. And hop! The rest is kind of an art form. Putting trim around the frame Hiding all those exposed studs is probably one of the least easy parts here. Because you have to actually make it look good. But other than that, make sure everything on the outside is caulked. The screen gets installed in a similar fashion to the door. And enjoy what is probably one of the single most incredible upgrades to your home there can be. The house instantly gets brighter. You see the nature in your backyard. And you have a means to get there. Thank you for watching.